Hi guys, welcome to Go Tutorial Part 12. My name is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog. Today we are going to add form validation to our application here. So one of the cool things about Go is that you can use what are called reflectors to basically create custom types after you've specified the type of a piece of data. Now I'll show you how this works here in a moment. So the first thing we want to do is import our validator library. So this is our validator library. It's called Go Validator. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this guy's name. Inside of our main function, we call set fields required by default, and we just hard code true into it. And I'll show you what this does in a moment. Now we need to go to our data, and we need to modify our struct. So what we're actually going to do here is basically bind a small piece of JSON to each individual field of our struct. And we do this with a little back quotes. So in this case, we're going to say our key is valid. And then inside of the key, the message is just going to be required and UUID v4. What we're basically doing here is we're saying, okay, when we validate this particular field in our struct, we need to have a value in it. And that value needs to be of type unique user ID version 4. Now let's do our username. Our username is also required and in our username field we only want alpha and numeric characters. Our password it's just going to be required so we just need a password. For our first name it's just going to be required and alpha which means only alphabet characters. The same for our last name. For our email of course we need required as well and we're going to just throw in the email type what this basically does is it compares the email that's input with a regex that specifies what an email should look like. Finally, for our errors, we're just going to throw in valid and a minus sign. And this basically just means that we do not want to reflect on this particular data. But because of what we wrote in our main file, this set fields required by default, we have to at least put something here to specify that this is in fact part of the struct. So now before we actually move forward with what we were doing, we're going to amend our UUID function here. And we're just going to use a library to generate our unique user ID. So this is the name of the library that we're going to use. It's called Go UUID. So down here we can remove all of this. We can remove this too. And we can just say ID equals UUID dot new version 4 and then we will just return id dot string and this will convert our id to a string now this is of course a built-in method for the library we're not using the go built-in string method for this we can also remove these two uh, libraries fmt and crypto rand so the reason we did this is so that our new uid is correctly specified because when we go to validate it if we were doing it the other way it does not validate correctly. So now let's go into our main function and actually perform the validation. So we do the validation here inside of the post part of our signup. So after we create our user here, we want to say result, comma, EER equals go validator, validate, struct, and then we want to pass U into it. For now, I'm just going to comment out save data because we don't want to save any of this data. And we're going to say this, we're going to say if error is not equal to nil print ln error dot error and then we're going to say print ln result the reason we're going to do this is, is to show you guys what exactly these two values are and how we can actually use them one of the really cool things about go is that errors are actually a type this function here this dot error function this method actually will allow us to convert the error into a more readable string let's take a look at this error and what the actual output looks like so here's our sign up form and if we hit submit it should throw an error so looking back at the terminal here is our error it says username is a non-zero value required f name non-zero value required they should all say the same thing we aren't getting an error from our password though and that's because we're encrypting the empty string so if we remove the encrypt pass portion of this, we should now get an error. So now we're back at sign up and we could throw everything in as empty strings or we could just type things in that are invalid. So for example, our username should allow us to put in alpha characters and number characters, but not special characters. 
So let's throw on some special characters. Our first name shouldn't allow us to have numerals in there. So if we throw on some numerals in the first and last name, it should throw an error. Our email should be of type email, or it should look like an email at least. So we shouldn't be able to, for example, throw numerals at the end. And our password will simply throw an error if we just throw nothing in it. So let's submit this. And as you can see, here we go. It says here username and it shows us our username does not validate to alpha num. Password is a non-zero required. F name does not validate to alpha. Last name does not validate to alpha. Email does not validate as an email. So now that we have these errors, we can actually take advantage of them. So one of the cool things about Go is that you can actually match substrings with strings. So what we can do is we can actually take this error, err.error equals e, and then we can make a bunch of if statements. We can say if re strings, and this is a new library that we're bringing in. So here's our strings library. So if strings, and then we just want the contains function. And what this will allow us to do is check to see if our string contains a substring. So the first substring we want to look for is uppercase L name. So if E contains L name and RE is true, meaning the function resolves to true, then we can call our set message function and we can set a message of L name and we can say, please enter a valid last name. So we could actually concatenate our u last name into this and we could say the name is not valid and we can do this for all of the strings that come back so we have a username string we have a password string we have a first name and a last name string and we also have our email string so let's do that for all of them all right guys so here is our bunch of if statements so we are checking to see if the error contains the last name and if it does, we send back a message that says the name is not valid. And we put all of these into a cookies, and which we can then get up here in the get section. And then we can render them on our templates. Right now, what basically is happening is we can go through here, and every time we have an error, we can then display it on our template. Then we can say, if results equals true, u.password equals encrypt password, U dot password. So now we're encrypting our password and resetting it to u dot password. Then we are saving our data and then we are going to redirect to the index and then we're going to put a return statement here. And the reason we're going to do that is to avoid potentially causing errors because we're going to have a redirect right here. Down here we want to redirect back to sign up so that we can show the messages if we have a problem with post. So if the result is not true and if there is an error, we're going to redirect back to sign up and we're going to show all these errors. So how do we show all these errors? So let's go up here and we use our get message functions to do this. So we do u dot errors equals make map string string. This will create a map and then we can assign our values to our u dot errors. Okay, so this is how we get our errors. So as you can see here, each error has a key. So this one is L name, and then we just get the message corresponding to that key. So get the message, L name, and then first name, first name, email, email, username, username, password, and password. And we are putting all of these into our U errors map, which will allow us to then render it to our sign up template. So we can edit our sign up template to have a with block sort of like how we have in our main so we have this with.errors message block and if we put a block like this inside of our sign up form we can say for example after the username label we can say with.errors username and this will display the error we can do the same for first name last name etc all right so there we go we have username we have f name we have l name we have email and we have password so now if we run this this should allow us to see these errors. So let's run it real quick. If we go to our sign up and we hit submit, we get all of our error statements. And as you can see here, the username and it's blank because we put nothing into it. So if we put a bad username in and we put a bad name in, bad last name and a bad email, then this will come back and show us what we actually put in. Now, of course, these messages don't make sense where we have empty messages, so let's just make more general 
messages here. And of course, if we reload everything, they all go away because the cookies disappear immediately. So let's change our messages slightly. So now we have more general messages here. Just please enter a valid last name, please enter a valid email address, please enter a valid first name, etc., etc. There's one more thing that we should do before we start to run this again, though, and that is actually change our signup form. So one of the things that we neglected to add to our signup form was a confirmation password field. So we need a label. So we'll put one down here. And then we need an input for a password as well. So our label is going to be called for C password. It's going to be of type password and the ID and the name are going to be both C password. And we're going to say confirm password. And what this will do is it'll give us another input that will allow the user to enter in uh, another password to confirm that they entered in the correct password. And then we can match the two form values together and if they inputted a bad form value, we can send back an error. So let's actually create the error here. So to create the error, we need to put an if statement between this if statement here, the closing of this if statement, and the start of this if statement. In fact, we have this in the wrong block. All of this should be out here. Luckily, we didn't try to do anything. Let's get rid of this redirect, because we don't need it either. So we want to say if our form value, and this is going to be password, does not equal our form value, C password, set message, and our message is going to be W, it's going to be password type because we want it to show up in the password box. And we're just going to say the passwords you entered do not match. And then we are going to throw a redirect and we will throw a return statement as well. Now the reason we're putting these return statements in is because sometimes Go will actually come through and try to execute two redirects at once because these redirects are so close in the code. If we don't have a return statement here, then this function will continue executing even though it's already redirected because of latency. So this will make our code neater. It's sort of like throwing a break statement in in, in JavaScript or Python it sort of allows us to write, you know, easier code. And we could throw another return statement here, but there really is no point because this is the end of the function. So this is now looking pretty good. So now we have a more complete validation system that will be able to send us back messages. Let's actually look at it in action. So here's our signup form, and now we have six different fields here. And let's create a user, so tensor, and the name will be, let's say, uh, Phil Roth with an email of philroth at roth.com, and that should validate, and our password will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we'll confirm it with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If we hit submit. Because we came to the login form, we know that it worked. And we can actually look at it in our SQL browser. Here it is in our SQL browser. As you can see, we have our UUID. We have our first name, Phil Roth. Username of Tensor, an email. And we also have our password that is hashed. So now if we go back to the signup form and say we throw in two wrong passwords. As you can see, we also have this, the passwords you entered do not match error. So all of this is working quite nicely. All right, guys, so that's it for this tutorial. In our next tutorial, we're going to actually modify the way that we look at our data. We are going to make it so that when a user signs in, instead of sending back a cookie with the username and password on it, which we are doing right here, we are just going to send back a cookie with the unique user ID on it. And then we're going to be able to use that unique user ID to query our database and find all of the user data and pull it out of the database. That way, when we are actually dealing with users in our program, we are associating them with our unique user ID rather than with a username or password. So the only time we need to worry about the username and password is when we're on the front page and when somebody is signing in or signing up. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, please feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to comment. And if you disliked it, of course, as always, you can go crazy and do whatever you want. Have a good day, guys.